we thank God for how far he has brought us. Amen. We continue with the Ruth, the book of Ruth series. Today we are going to do Ruth chapter 1. Uh, it's a very short passage and deep lessons to learn. Deep lessons that we can apply to our lifestyle, our daily lifestyle, so that we can be godly and virtuous women of God, knowing good from evil, and abiding in the word of God day in and night till we are raptured. Amen. So take your Bibles. Let's go to Ruth chapter 1. R-U-T-H. Ruth chapter, I mean chapter 3, sorry. Chapter 3 is what we are doing today. Please get your Bible and let's go. Amen. I'm reading. One day Naomi said to Ruth, My daughter, it is time that I found a permanent home for you so that you be you will be provided for. Boaz is a close relative of ours and he's been very kind by letting you gather grain with, with his young women. Tonight, he will be, he will be winnowing barley at the threshing floor. Now do as I tell you. Take a bath and put on perfume and dress in your nicest clothes. Dress in your nicest clothes. Then go to the threshing floor. But don't let Boaz see you until he has finished eating and drinking. Be sure to notice where he lies down. Then go and uncover his feet and lie down. He will tell you what to do. I will do everything. I will do everything you say, Ruth replied. So she went down to the threshing floor that night and followed the instructions of her mother-in-law. After Boaz had finished eating and drinking and was in good spirits, he laid down at the far end of the pile of grain and went to sleep. Then Ruth came quietly, uncovered his feet and lay down. Around midnight, Boaz suddenly woke up and turned over. He was surprised to find a woman lying at his feet. Who are you? He asked. I am your servant, Ruth. She replied, spread the corner of your covering over me, for you are my family redeemer. The Lord bless you, my daughter. Boaz exclaimed, you are showing even more family loyalty now than you did before. For you have not gone after a younger man, whether rich or poor. Now don't worry about a thing, my daughter. I will do what is necessary. For everyone in town knows you are a virtuous woman. But while it is true that I am one of your family redeemers, there is another man who is more closely related to you than I am. Stay here tonight, and in the morning, I will talk to him. If he is willing to redeem you very well, let him marry you. But if he is not willing, then as surely as the Lord lives, I will redeem you myself. Now lie down here until morning. So Ruth lay at Boaz's feet until the morning. But she got up before it was light, enough for people to recognize each other. For Boaz had said, no one must know that a woman was here at the threshing floor. Then Boaz said to her, bring your cloak and spread it out. He measured six scoops of barley into the cloak and placed it on her back. Then he returned to the town. When Ruth went back to her mother-in-law, Naomi asked, What happened, my daughter? 
Ruth told Naomi everything, everything Boaz had done for her. And she added, he gave me these six scoops of Bailey and said, don't go back to your mother-in-law empty-handed. Then Naomi said to her, just be patient, my daughter, until we hear what happens. The man won't rest until he has settled things today. Hallelujah. This is a very deep, 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 deep story. This that has played between Naomi, Ruth, and Boaz. Naomi, Ruth, and Boaz. Here is a mother-in-law and a daughter-in-law where there is no man involved. And these women, these two women, understood each other, had come to love each other, and have come to understood one another. And they were all ready to work together for their own good, for their own uh, uh, good ending in life. Beloved, the lesson, the first lesson I want to draw here is that in unity lies our strength. Women of God, women in Christ Jesus, let us be united in every way possible. For when women in a ministry are united, that ministry grows stronger and stronger each time. When the women in a ministry, in a church, are bonded together in love and in understanding one another. They are able to grow from grace to grace. God surely orders their steps. So, hallelujah. So we just read the Ruth chapter 3. We have just read Ruth chapter 3. And we see a deeper bonding between Naomi and Ruth, a mother-in-law and a daughter-in-law, in Ruth, Ruth chapter 3, Ruth had already made a vow that when Naomi will lie, she is surely going to lie. And she will not rest till she find peace with Naomi and her God. And now she made sure that, Ruth made sure that she stuck to her promises. And so whatever Naomi would tell Ruth to go and do, that she did exactly, without hesitation. Ruth did exactly what Naomi had asked her to do, without hesitation, without questioning. Because she knew that Ruth was an experienced woman. Many times, the younger women in a ministry, in a church, are so, they have brought in subordination. They don't respect the elderly women in the church. The elderly women in their families, they are not submissive, they are not ready to listen. So that the elderly women in the ministry or in their families would share their life experiences, which could be, a life transformation for this young generation. They believe they know too much. They, they have technology on their side. They know a lot. And they will not come to the level of the old women. They believe that the time for these old women has, is gone. It's far gone. They don't have any sense now. They don't know anything now. And so you see a young woman who called herself a Christian who will never listen to an elderly person, an elderly woman for that matter. And they will tell you, you, your time is past. You are living in that archaic time. I am living in current time. We are in the modern IT technology world. And whatever we are doing now is the best. Yours was in, in the foolish era. Beloved young woman, if you are listening to us at this time, I beseech you all with the mercies of God to learn under the feet of the elderly because they have experiences that you are yet to experience. And sometimes it's good to draw from their experience, to learn from their experience. You are able to order your steps, your steps properly 
without falling from grace. You are about to take a step that a woman of God who is much experienced than you have done that before. It did not help them. And they are admonishing you with the word of God, with sermons, with teachings, with words of encouragement. Yet it enters one ear and goes through the other ear. Why? Because you are in technology age. Whatever that woman is telling you about doesn't hold water anymore. We are in the modern world where women, women go and propose to men and tell them, would you marry me? And, and what? Or, you know, can we be boyfriends and girlfriends and let's sleep together. Let's see if it's going to work out. Now the women, just as the Isaiah, the prophet said, that seven women will go to a man and say, just redeem me with your name. We will take care of our food and everything. It is happening in our time because the younger generation never want to learn from the older generation. But Ruth wasn't like that. And so Boaz even testified about this young lady. He said, I know and even the whole town knows and believes that you are a virtuous woman. I pray that that will be the tag for you. Young woman, young adult i pray that that will be the tag for you that wherever you find yourself people will tag you the virtuous woman a woman with a noble character a woman with substance a woman who brings peace to the family among siblings in front of your parents in the standard family they will see you as an extraordinary woman because you exhibit behavior that is well worthy of emulation. You exhibit behavior or attitude that calls for other young women like you to also learn. Ruth learned. She took every advice that Naomi had to offer. She took every advice that Naomi had for her. He said, take your best clothes, dress, put on perfume. Your nicest clothes, your best one. Ruth is experienced with men because she was married before. She knew what would get the attention of a man. Nowadays, the young women think that exposing half their breasts, half their thighs, gets the attention of the men. Nowadays, the, the young ladies think putting on Brazilian hair and all the Jezebel things and heavy makeup will get the attention of the men because men last with their eyes. But they have forgotten that men with noble character, godly men, looks in the inward. Not only at the outward, they are attracted by something. And that is not the worldliness. Men with the noble character smells. They smell the perfume of a virtuous woman. Because out of your mouth, when you speak, it exposes the nature of your heart. When you talk, when you talk, the, the choice of words, when you act, your behavior tells the man or the men what is within you. You can pretend all you can. But men that are filled with the Spirit of God are able to know through the help of the Holy Spirit what you are made of, the substance you are made of. Ruth did exactly what Naomi, the mother-in-law, instructed her to do. And it went very well. She went to lie at, this, at the feet of Jesus. Women, if we are going to put away all the bad behaviors that makes us stink at the feet of Jesus, if we are going to put away all the other essences of the world and we will put on the Christ-like robe, the righteous garment, and come under the feet of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
he will redeem us. Hallelujah. Jesus will redeem us. If we are going to put on the, the perfume and the dress, the nicest clothes is, is, is taking away the things of the world and putting on the righteous garment that comes through the washing of the uh, with the blood of Jesus Christ. Every child of God born of the spirit has the righteous garment, which is the choices of clothes. Many come to Christ, they have the righteous garment on due to the pressures of this world. Many women have bowed to the pressures of this world. Now they have removed the righteous garment and now they are wearing the satanic apparel. The queen of the coast apparel, the Jezebel apparel. Because they are ungodly men who are telling them that now that is the order of the day and it is okay. They approve of it. Boaz asked, who is this? And now uh, Ruth said, it is me. And he, she explained everything just as Naomi had instructed her, had taught her. Beloved, we are learning under the feet of Jesus. We are giving you nothing but the word of God. And we beseech all the women in Christ that if we will hold on to the teachings, if we will hold on to this undiluted word and not just hear it, make it pass one ear and let it enter the other. We are going to live a lifestyle worthy of emulation. Christ will be formed in us and people will ask, where are you coming from? Who are you? What happened? This is not the woman that I used to know. The married woman uh, who have taken the Western culture. And now your marriages are turned upside down. You don't respect your husbands anymore. You don't honor them anymore. You think you are paying bills. They are paying bills. And so everybody can cook. Everybody can do whatever they like. Please, if you are going to listen to the instructions from these lessons. If you are going to humble yourself. And be a woman with a noble character. And come down as the submissive wife. Now your husband, who now knows you as the, the strange woman, will now turn around and ask, who are you? What is your name? I thought I have, I have married the wrong person. I have all, I had almost regretted marrying you. I thought I was about to break out. Of this marriage i was about to run away but where came the change and you will give glory to jesus beloved we are not teaching all this for the fun of it but so we will have a life transformation where our husbands our children will be like is this my mother mama what happened where comes this change and you will give glory to jesus that jesus came in the scene he said, I met the man Jesus who taught me under his feet, who showed me to put on my righteous garment, who said my attitude coming from my heart and into the world must depict Christ, must depict love, must depict the best. Beloved, if only we are going to learn today, just as Ruth learned, and did exactly as Naomi had what taught her. She didn't go out there making noises. She didn't go out there reporting that, oh Boaz, I heard you are next in command. And so you have to do this or do that. She went secretly. She went there secretly. And she did with all humility. That which she had been taught to do. Beloved, recognizing the hand of God, Naomi shared a plan with Ruth. Being a near kinsman, Boaz had a responsibility to redeem uh, property belonging to Naomi and to marry Ruth and to raise up children to carry on the family name. When you read the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 25, God gave instructions over there. 
instead of bringing Boaz before the public and forcing him to redeem her, Ruth quietly provided him the opportunity to accept or to reject her by going to him in secrecy at night. Beloved, maybe by mistake, by temptation, a man has impregnated, I mean, you, you, you had an immoral affair and you are pregnant by a man who doesn't want to accept responsibility. That's not the end of you. And that is not the, if they are refusing to accept responsibility, taking them to the judiciary, to the court, to whatever, those living in the diaspora so that they charge them child support, whatever, is unnecessary for a righteous and a virtuous woman. Many women, because of uh, uh, child support or whatever the government would take from the men and give it to them, they don't even want to have anything to do with the men, even when the men want to be part of the child's life. Temptation has come. You've fallen from grace. And look at your aftermath attitude. Do you think you stand a chance of making heaven? I kid you not. The answer is no. And this is not judgment. This is rebuking in, in righteousness. Because the word of God comes to rebuke us, to correct us, and train us in righteousness. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. Naomi could have gone public with it. She could have gone with Ruth to the, uh, the family people and start making noise. Eh, this Boaz is there. She's, he's supposed to do this long time since I came and he hasn't done anything. It looks like he wants to pretend that he hasn't seen us. Blah, blah, blah. Just as women, we are bound to say stupidness, stupid, stupidities. Women, we talk one, 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 all the time. One, 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 one. All the time we are talking trash. All the time. But a virtuous woman will not do that. A virtuous woman will not go one, 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 one. Hey, people, listen. Hey, this person, listen. That person, no. You take everything concerning you to Jesus in prayer. That's what a virtuous woman does. You try to speak to that person amicably, peacefully, in, in love, in the love of God. Virtuous women never makes noise like a rattlesnake. So if you've been making noise, taking men to the judicial place where they will charge them uh, support, charge support, whatever, go and withdraw that case. For that will not make you inherit the kingdom of God. But sister, what you are saying is not right. If he doesn't want to take responsibility, I'm going to be left by myself. Who told you if you have not taken him there, God would not have taken care of you? Who told you? Who told you? We are going to judge the world and we take our matters to the court system. That is unscriptural. That is not biblical. So as a woman of God, you are seeking to enter the kingdom of God. If you are seeking to enter the kingdom of God, then do what is right by the Bible standard. If not, the ungodly will not inherit the kingdom of God. But that's not fair. He impregnated me. He put that baby in me. The both of you consented to have sex. So don't go and push any blame on the man that is the man he has to take care of you. That bitterness will take you to hellfire, my sister. I beg you, I beseech you with the mercies of God. Repent. Now, most men and many men have turned, they have become stone-hearted, cold-hearted because of the nature and the attitude of women in this end time. Your arrogant and your prideful way of speaking has turned their heart to stones and love cannot penetrate. Love cannot and, and each of you, each other, you will be on each other's throat. Baby mama, baby daddy, all those fornicating uh, 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 scenario, drama. And you think you are in the right because he is the man and he impregnated you. Guess what? You and that man will end up in hellfire if you do not repent. And you are the woman. We bring peace to the home. 
Boaz was aware of his relationship to Naomi. And I bet you all or almost everyone from that family was aware of their tradition. But Naomi did not approach him rudely. Naomi did not uh, tell Ruth to go and be harsh, be rude. Hey, Boaz, don't you know since we came, you are supposed to take care of us? There are some women, even the men are making effort to take care of them. But because of pride, arrogance, because of greediness, covetousness, nothing satisfies these women. If you are doing that, it is the spirit of Jezebel controlling women who are always controlling, bossy. That is the spirit of Jezebel right now. You need deliverance ASAP, ASAP, immediately. Deliver yourself from the spirit of Jezebel or it is going to end you up in hellfire. I beseech you with the mercies of God. Do not end up in hellfire with that attitude. Jesus said, look, I am sending you out as sheep among wolves. So be as shrewd as snakes and as harmless as doves. Women who are harmless as doves do not take their marital issues or relationship issues to the court for men to be charged whatever and being shrewd to be shrewd the godly way is to act with wisdom of jesus not to take matters into our own hands and teach the worldly people that we too we know the law but to deal with those who are involved with us sensibly before they try to harm us we deal with them sensibly. So if you need to involve the family, extended family, you do that with all humility, not in the court system. You can never call yourself a Christian. You can never call yourself a child of God if you cannot use the wisdom of Christ Jesus to settle your issues or your matters. We cannot tell we, we, we cannot be doing that, you know, doing the same thing as the worldly people when we have rejected the wisdom of God. We need to prove to the, to the world that we have the wisdom of God and we are already ahead of the game. Naomi taught Ruth a better way to handle men, to agree with them. There is a better way to handle our men without publicly doing all sort of nonsense that is happening in this end time without taking them to court without screaming at them without shouting at them without talking as if they are our classmate or age mate or they are they are our servants many women have turned their husbands like house servants and the men don't want trouble and so they comply with whatever. Woman, I'm telling you that what you are doing will take you to hellfire if you do not repent. We are to submit under the men and honor them, respect them. And they, in return, they will love us and honor us. But what if your husband is a worldly man? Then you will pray till the Lord touches his heart and turn his heart like a water course. Pray according to Proverbs 21 1. Say the heart of the king is, is in God's hands and he turned it like a water course to wherever he pleases. We serve the God who is able to change and transform your husband to the God fearing man you want him to be. If you ignored all warning signs before marrying and now he has turned to be something else on you, then you can't blame God. You need to plead for mercy, for disobeying God, telling you not to go and marry that man in the first place. So whatever you have to suffer, you endure till God brings you deliverance. Yes, that's the truth. It's the cold truth. Your, has, your pastor will not tell you, neither will that prophet of yours. Because when they tell you the truth, you won't bring your tithe. When they tell you the truth, you won't bring your offering, your seed. But we speak the truth to you. That which can lead you to eternal life. Naomi taught Ruth the better way to handle men. How 
men can agree with them easily without any publicly causing them you know to stumble from grace to shame many women have called their husband to 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 move from grace glory of god to shame to disgrace christian mothers we must teach our daughters how to handle themselves decently and gracefully around men mothers we must teach our daughters and sons how to resolve issues with one another peacefully and gracefully so that the glory of god would be seen ruth was within her right asking boaz to redeem her boaz was willing and eager to perform his responsibility but said there was a kinsman closer than he who had the first right it is not enough to work god's plan it is not enough to work god's plan but it must be done by his method sometimes many people go ahead of god boaz must first approach the other kinsman and give him his rightful opportunity to redeem Ruth. He told Ruth to wait until morning, then return home and wait for him to settle the matter. Beloved, Boaz was ready to take responsibility, but wanted to go through the proper channel. Beloved, if you really claim that you are a child of God, you do not make any decision without consulting the Holy Spirit in you. If you have really 100% yielded to the Holy Spirit, why do you take decisions, go and make mistakes with your husband, with your children, and then come back, Holy Spirit, forgive me, Jesus, forgive me. Forgive you for what? Why do we bypass the plan of God to do whatever we like and let her come and cry? We must not. Enough of it. Dear woman of God, tell yourself, enough of my my worldly knowledge i will go through the proper protocol the proper channel of god that which is accepted by the family when we agree on this earth heaven writes it down so if your family in your family there is an arrangement there is a protocol beloved don't say ah Right now, I'm above my family. I'm not part of them. I'm part of the Christian family. And so, I don't have to obey this or that. Beloved, go through the proper channel in your family. Extended family, immediate family, whatever family uh, lineage that you are in. Go through the proper protocol. When getting married, go through the proper channel. And don't bypass any law in that family. Because when they agreed, heaven agreed. And when you disobey the laws, you are a lawbreaker. No lawbreakers are entering heaven. I tell you in truth, no lawbreakers are entering the kingdom of God. We must learn to follow rules. People in authority, we must learn to obey them. Beloved, there is a way that seems right to a man. But the end leads to death. It's in the book of Proverbs. Proverbs 16 and Proverbs 14. It could look right in your own eyes. It seems right in our own eyes. It's perfect. We could be right, honest of something. But when other siblings come complaining, the same right, they want to take ownership or whatever. We must follow protocols and do the right thing by everyone. It could be a land dispute. It could be about properties dispute. It could be about anything. Just follow the family protocol. And while doing that, you pray that the Lord Jesus intervene so that all of you will come to one conclusion and be still united. For united, that family will stand, but divided, you shall all fall down. It doesn't matter how prayerful you are. If you are not able to follow the human protocol in your family and pray to God for more direction and for more peace, you will fail, they will all fail. And the enemy will enter to strike them. Strike all of you down. Let's be vigilant. Let's be wise. Ruth returned to Naomi and told her all that happened. 
Naomi told her to be patient, for Boaz would not rest until he concluded the matter. Naomi was well experienced. He knew, she knew very well how things plays out. She has been through some. Beloved young woman, let's learn to listen from those who have the experience in Christ. Do not be wise in your own eyes. God did not rest until redemption was accomplished for all mankind through Jesus Christ. God did not rest. He will not rest in arranging the circumstances of your life until redemption is accomplished in you personally. That's one thing for sure. Note that Ruth did not return to Naomi empty-handed. Naomi's empty days to which she referred in chapter 1 were about to be over. Naomi had some how. Naomi, who went full and came empty, had somehow come to trust God that God can turn his her mess into a message now. Now that she has come back as a prodigal doctor, has come back from wallowing in, in the wilderness of, of uh, Moab, Beloved, when you were in the world, you trusted in your own wisdom and instincts. But now that you are in Christ, now that you have come to the truth, now that you are learning under the feet of Jesus, you must learn to trust our Lord Jesus. That he is able to deliver. That he is able to do that which concerns your life. So why keep using, you know, what, what anything that comes into your mind? Why not trust God? Why not trust Jesus? Why not give him the benefit of the doubt that he who has called you, he who has made you to see the light is able to keep your feet from falling. May the Lord help us women and our men. May the Lord order our step so that not only are we going to do things that pleases him, but through what we are doing that is pleasing the Lord, others, we women will bring others especially our husbands, to also know the truth. May God bless us. May God help us. May God keep us to the great day of his coming. Although we are called into eternity, Jesus loves us and I love you also. God bless us all. Amen.